What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC 2021 Series 10 video. With the Series 10 ladder going live today, I thought that it'd be a really fun thing to talk about uh, to explain why I think Tapu Bulu actually has some usage cases in Series 10 where in previous formats it actually didn't. It's always been in direct competition with Rillaboom and it's completely understandable that people want to run Rillaboom over Tapu Bulu uh, on a lot of teams and I'm going to be going over why I think that they're actually not very comparable in certain situations, but uh, I want to explain why Tapu Bulu is actually like usable. It's actually, I would say, good in certain builds. So yeah, uh, let's go ahead and talk about that. But before we do, if you guys enjoyed this video at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications because I bring you daily Pokemon Sword and Shield content. And answer my comment question of the day. What do you think about Tapu Bulu? And what other Pokemon do you think actually have usage cases in this format that people haven't caught on to? So yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. This isn't going to be a scripted or very heavily edited video. Uh, I have like notes written down here and I'm going to try to follow these notes, but uh, I might get a little disorganized at times. So yeah, just bear with me for a moment. So let's start off by directly comparing Tapu Bulu and Rillaboom and explaining why they actually play pretty differently. So I will start off by saying this. Rillaboom will always be a more popular and easier to use Pokemon on a lot of different comps. And I actually think it's optimal on many more comps than Rillaboom or than Tapu Bulu is. That being said, there are usage cases for Tapu Bulu that I'll talk about in a minute, but for now we're going to talk about Rillaboom and what it does. Rillaboom has Grassy Surge, much like Tapu Bulu does. However, it sacrifices some bulk and attack for higher speed and access to these three moves that Tapu Bulu doesn't have that Rillaboom will always run because of their utility. Fake Out, U-Turn, Grassy Glide. Fake Out always flinches uh, on turn one that this thing hits the field. U-Turn allows you to pivot in and out in the field, getting a lot of momentum. And Grassy Glide is a plus one priority move when Grassy Terrain is active that still benefits from getting the power boost uh, from the Grassy Terrain. These three moves are essentially a lock on, on Rillaboom. You're always going to run that. Look at the usage stats on this. They're so good that you always want to run that. Your last move is pretty much the only bit of wiggle room that you have on many Rillaboom sets. Woodhammer is typically the most common move that people will run on this thing, but it does have access to a number of tools that um, allow it to deal with different situations. High horsepower isn't a very bad move for hitting stack attack. Uh, it doesn't get close combat, actually. Uh, superpower is a fighting type move that I could run in this slot if it, you know, really wants to knock out the stack attack. Uh, it also gets access to things like bulldoze if you really felt like it for speed control. It, it could run drum beating if it really felt like it. Uh, but I think knockoff is actually going to be the most common move that you would run on this slot if you really felt like not running Woodhammer. Now, Rillaboom fits in a lot of compositions. I think the two compositions that come to mind are going to be Xerneas builds and, um, and Zacian builds. They both benefit from Rillaboom being able to beat out things like Kyogre, uh, despite the fact that Kyogre might be Scarfed or have a Tailwind up, and they both benefit from the fact that you're lowering the damage of Earthquake on things like Zacian or uh, other Pokemon that Xerneas teams tend to want to build with because I know some Xerneas teams run like stack attack and stuff in the back That's actually really nice being able to make sure you don't get one shot by earthquake Rillaboom is a phenomenal Pokemon one of the best. There's absolutely no question about it 46% usage is well deserved on this thing, but I Think Tapu Bulu has usage cases too, and they're pretty hard to compare when you really get down into it There's a lot of nuance to it and it comes down to small things and small micro situations within games that a lot of people might overlook and just say, yeah, why not just click Grassy Glide? <laughs> so yeah, let's get into it. This is going to be where I sort of talk about a lot of different things. And I'm going to try to stay on track. I'm going to try to, you know, do this in order one at a time. Let's start off with advantages that Rillaboom has purely because of its stats and typing. Rillaboom or Tapu Bulu. So uh, Tapu Bulu has 70 HP, 130 attack, 115 defense, 85 special attack, 95 special defense, and 75 speed. Its typing does make it much weaker to Amoongus. You're never going to get one shot by Clear Smog, even if you didn't run any bulk or any Assault Vest. You're never getting one shot by Clear Smog, which is the most common move that it has. But it, you, you will take a lot more damage. And Sludge Bomb will still be doing a decent amount. Um, just a second, I'm responding to a text. Just so you know. All right. But that... Amoongus thing, as long as you play around it, as long as you play smart, which anyone at high level play will be able to avoid, uh, it, it shouldn't come into, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Tapu Bulu 
gains the advantage of actually being able to wall out two of the most powerful Pokemon in the format being Urshfu Rapid Strike and Urshfu Single Strike. So Urshfu Rapid Strike is a water and fighting type Pokemon that has seen heavy usage because of its ability to deal with things like Incineroar. It tends to run Surging Strikes, Aqua Jet, Close Combat, and Protect. None of these moves actually hit uh, Incineroar, or actually hit Rillaboom. Surging Strikes just completely bounces off of Tapu Bulu. <laughs> I, keep, I keep mixing up people, uh, Pokemon's names. Uh, Surging Strikes just bounces off of Tapu Bulu because of the Grassy Train Recovery and the Resistance. And Close Combat, a move that would typically use or be used to cover Rillaboom if you had a Focus Sash and you could take one hit and deal massive damage, is still going to bounce off of Tapu Bulu. You actually not only wall this thing out, but you gain more health from fighting it. A single Horn Leech is enough to one-shot an Urshfu Rapid Strike and you get all of your health back. Doesn't matter if they have, um, it doesn't matter if they have a Focus Sash equipped and can close combat you. It doesn't matter if Grassy Terrain is gone, you can't click Grassy Glide. Tapu Bulu doesn't care. It doesn't fall into those situations that Rillaboom would fall into. That is very big. Urshfu Single Strike also gets walled out because Urshfu Single Strike is dark in fighting type. And while Wicked Blow would be able to deal massive damage to Pokemon that I would recommend pairing up with Tapu Bulu, obviously don't use Giratina, that was just a fun team I built, but like Necrozma Dust Main. Tapu Bulu is able to switch in on the, the Wicked Blow pretty easily and just fight it. Like you can go for like two Horn Leeches and it's gone. You can close combat if you really wanted to. So typing wise, Tapu Bulu has those advantages. It's able to switch in on other moves at the exchange of being more weak to steel and uh, poison moves. That being said, I know that like Zacian is more common uh, in this format. Urzation is pretty common in this format, so you have to be careful for it. But I think that, you know, Tapu Bulu actually pairs up pretty well with Rillaboom, so you're gonna err. <laughs> I can't speak. Pairs up really well with Incineroar. Uh, so you have to watch out for that by, you know, just playing smart. So, typing-wise, it gets that. Um, Stat-wise, I want to talk about that now. There's actually a really interesting interaction that Rillaboom and Ndidi have in this format, and that's that they share a speed tier. 85-85. If we look at Rillaboom and Ndidi, they share the speed stat, and they share the ability to have terrain on the field. Psychic Surge will actually pretty much always go up over uh, Grassy Surge because many Ndidi female run zero speed IVs with a relaxed nature, meaning they have absolutely no speed investment. Rillaboom tends to run speed, so this thing is going to end up getting its terrain up second and thus having uh, that terrain on lead. Tapu Bulu never has to worry about this. If you lead off Tapu Bulu versus Ndidi female, most of the time you're going to be running in on a Trick Room team which means that that zero speed, that zero speed IV and the uh, negative speed nature will actually put you at a lower speed than Ndidi female, meaning that you have terrain dominance on lead. This actually helps out a lot when you pair it up with Incineroar because you can now not only fake out Pokemon that Ndidi female will let off with, but you can just have momentum. If you lead off with Tapu Bulu plus Incineroar, like on this Necrozma Dust main team that I built, there's a lot of things you can do. The Incineroar is able to fake out whatever's on lead. It can also parting shot, snarl, Tapu Bulu can snarl a lot of things in the field and sit on the field for an obnoxiously long time. So that's a really interesting situation that you can have there. The longevity of Tapu Bulu is another big thing. If we actually take a look at Tapu Bulu versus Kyogre Tornadus, Tapu Bulu takes less damage from Hurricane than a Tornadus would deal to um, a Rillaboom, but it also doesn't have to worry about Zarina as much. Zarina can actually straight up block the um, Grassy Glide that uh, Rillaboom would want to go for onto Kyogre, where Tapu Bulu is always just going to go ahead and click the um, the Horn Leech on the Kyogre. And something that a lot of people don't realize is Horn Leech is stronger than Grassy Glide. Grassy Glide does have that priority stuff, but like I said, if you're running Tapu Bulu on a Trick Room team, it doesn't really matter. Horn Leech not only deals more damage and thus means that because of your lower or your higher attack stat uh, and the higher base power, you don't have to invest as much to one shot a Kyogre. This Kyogre is always getting one shot by Horn Leech and you get all that health back. You pretty much go back up to full regardless of where you are if you Horn Leech a Kyogre. So that is a very, very nice interaction that Tapu Bulu has versus Tornogre teams, and something that they might not expect if you lead off with Tapu Bulu and an Incineroar versus Tornadus Kyogre, what they're gonna wanna do is say, okay, I am very scared of that Tapu Bulu. I wanna hurricane it. Two hurricanes should do the trick. So obviously turn one, I'm gonna wanna hurricane that Tapu Bulu and protect my Kyogre. And then turn two, I go ahead and I hurricane again. Well, <laughs> this can all be avoided by very simply running Stone Edge. If you Stone Edge a Tornado Therian, something that a uh, Rillaboom can't do, it's only gonna be able to like click knockoff on it. You have a very high chance of one shotting, eighty-five or eighty-seven percent chance. And this is with like my bulkier set. There you go. If you want to one shot it, 
148 attack investment adamant nature that's huge so that is that is absolutely important uh to that matchup while Rillaboom obviously can click Grassy Glide, and that's a huge thing, it doesn't like dealing with the Tornadus as well as Tapu Bulu wants to, and the Zarina can straight up wall it out. But yeah, uh, Tapu Bulu just like does not care for Zarina, it actually takes less damage from its Triple Axle, which is something that is really notable there. Now we're going to talk about Tapu Bulu on Trick Room teams, and why it's actually really nice. Necrozma Dusk Main is one of the few use usage cases where I think Tapu Bulu is actually a lot better than Rillaboom, and that's because Tapu Bulu can more comfortably run Snarl, and actually take significantly less damage from the Shadow Rex, uh, from the Calyrex Shadow. If we actually look at Calyrex Shadow, and we give it max special attack, 252, timid, with uh, Life Orb, just for like worst case situation. And we take a look at a Tapu Bulu, my custom set. The Astral Barrage, the move that you're most likely going to see because, like I said, if you lead off versus this thing, you're going to get your terrain up, so Expanding Force isn't really doing that much. Astral Barrage does 42 to 51% maximum, and thus, after Grassy Terrain Recovery, you're always going to get 3-hit KO'd. Now, that being said, you know, you don't have to wood hammer it, you can click Snarl. Snarl is doing 32 to 38% and bypassing uh, the Substitute and the Calyrex, which a lot of them are running right now, but it will also lower the special attack stat on this thing, Bring it to minus one, making it so it's dealing pretty much nothing to Tapu Bulu. And thus, on that turn, you can Horn Leech it and just get the KO. That is huge. That is absolutely insane. Like I said, Tapu Bulu loves Dustmane Necrozma. It loves getting the train up on lead. And Dustmane Necrozma for ta plus Tapu Bulu is one of the few cases where I would say you never want to run Rillaboom over it. That is very interesting. It's mainly, I think that Tapu Bulu's best usage case is as almost like... um. A patch like it patches up bad matchups versus calyrex shadow to an extent and that is really nice something else that i can talk about with tapu bulu is going to be its access to many different uh utility moves that rillaboom actually doesn't have not only does it have access to horn leash for the recovery snarl is a thing sign that they both have but i think that tapu bulu just runs it a lot better but it also has access to close combat which is a much more reliable fighting type move than rillaboom's um superpower is and the higher attack set also means it's doing more damage to things like stack attack and incineroar so close combat is very nice it's able to do a lot of damage and it doesn't lower the attack set after you use it and it also keeps its um it, it keeps its offensive momentum going like if you superpower a stack attack on the trick room turn when they don't expect it you don't lower your attack set and thus not pick up ko's with um your grass move like rillaboom would you're just able to keep going you do lower your bulk but that isn't too big of an issue for tap bulu because of how bulky it already is Something else it has is Nature's Madness, which is absolutely huge on Trick Room teams. If we take a look at it, Tapu Bulu has 75 speed, uh, which means that if we paired up with a zero speed Dustmane Necrozma, this thing's 77 speed means that you can pair these two. You can actually run Nature's Madness, lowering something's uh, lowering something's HP to half of what it was, and then KOing it with a Photon Geyser or a Sunsteel Strike. That is absolutely huge. I think that's actually one of the biggest reasons to use Tapu Bulu on a team. Um, but something else that you can actually take a look at is its access to moves like Rock Tomb, which is actually a pretty reliable form of speed control. I don't believe it gets... Does it get Bulldoze? It doesn't. But I think Rock Tomb is actually really nice because you not only get the coverage for things like Ho-Oh or Tornado Therion, um, or Tornado Incarnate, or whatever it's called, but it's just nice speed control. Something else that you could do if you really felt like it is just run straight up Swords Dance, which is dumb. I don't think you should actually do that. I think Tapu Bulu fits most well on Dustmane Necrozma teams and on other teams that maybe don't like dealing with Calyrex Shadow, like other Restricteds that don't want to run Rillaboom, but want to be able to set up Trick Room. So like maybe a Lunala, maybe a uh, freaking Dawn Wings Necrozma. I don't know. Trick Room Pokemon love Tapu Bulu. So yeah, uh, this might have been a very all over the wall video, very like unorganized, but there's so much about Tapu Bulu. There's a lot of nuance to it when it comes to how it works within the format. Yes, it doesn't have the same tools as Rillaboom, but they're they're not as comparable as you might think they are. It's mainly a factor of Tapu Bulu being a really, really nice utility Pokemon with a decent amount of support options and offensive potential. And it just sits on the field for an obnoxiously long time, where Rillaboom... Uh, is more like just linear fake out grassy glide u-turn knockoff. It's good, right? It's good. It's it's amazing, but it doesn't have the same amount of recovery and longevity as Tapu Bulu is. So powerful, scary on lead, 
gonna stick around a lot longer than you want it to and can still deal super, super high damage. So yeah, uh, sorry if this wasn't the most organized video. I really didn't know how to present this in a way that was like manageable because there's so many different things I could talk about with, with Tapu Bulu versus Rillaboom and how they interact in the game. I feel like this is something that I would like need to write like an essay on, but I just don't have time to write an essay. So let me know what you guys think. If you guys enjoyed this video, learn anything new, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.